Hello chess fans and welcome to Chess Vibe and today I'm going to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen vs Levin Aronian and this game is from the Gold Money Asian Rapid Knockout 2021 and this is the semi-final between Magnus Carlsen and Levin Aronian so this is the day number one I'm going to show you the game and this game is going to be very interesting as the first game was won by Levin Aronian and the second game have been drawn third game have been won by Magnus Carlsen so this is the last game of the first day so let's see what will happen to the game. Uh, as this is the semi-final between Magnus Carlsen and Levin Aronian. The another match is is between Ding Liren versus Vladis uh, Artemiev and Ding Liren won the first day. So let's see what will happen at the on the second day. So for now, let's focus on the Magnus Carlsen and Levin Aronian game. So Magnus Carlsen is white and Levin Aronian is black. So Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces started with 1d4 and Levin Aronian replied with knight to f6. Here Magnus Carlsen played bishop to f4 and by playing bishop to f4 we can definitely see that Magnus Carlsen is going for the London system and he usually plays London system because if he wants to if he does not want to play theory then he plays the london system because in the top level many gyms play all the theory moves and the results gets to a draw he wants to win this game because this is the last game that's why he's playing the london bishop f4 here we have d5 e3 bishop to g4 f3 bishop to d7 back and now here we have g4 so it's kind of a weird structure very like pawn the pawns on the king side is very advanced but and this gives a slightly advantage to black but in practical game let's let's see what happens after g4 here we have c5 c3 queen b6 pressurizing the pawn on b2 here we have queen b3 e6 knight d2 c4 queen c2 and here we have bishop d6 asking for a bishop bishopric Bishop into d6, Queen into d6, and here we have e4. We are just going for the center. So here, we, here, eleven or in played Queen c7. Taking was also an option, but after takes, here White will play g5, attacking the knight. And after knight h5, here White is going to simply grab the pawn, and White is having a very nice structure, and it's better for White. That's why e4. Here comes Queen c7. Here we have e5 by Magnus Carlsen, knight g8, knight e2, knight to c6, and here we have f4. And we can see that the center is closed and it's like a French defense structure where black usually plays on the queen side and here white is planning to play f5 and strike in the queen king side. So uh, this position is slightly better for white, it looks like because White is already planning to play f and if I talk about black, black haven't started to push his a and b pawn. That's why white is slightly better. After f4, here we have h5 by Aronian, g into h5 and here we have rook into h5. Yeah, just activating his rook and also stopping this f5 ideas in the future. Here we have rook g1, developing the piece and also putting the pressure on the g7 pawn. King f8 and many of you were thinking why king f8 in this position. Black has just broken his castle idea which he can't play something like long ca long side castle. But here black can play king f8 because if in the future white would play f5, for now the f5 is completely protected by the rook as well as the pawn as well as the bishop. So there is no worries to what will happen if white plays f5. For now, in this position, white can definitely uh, black can definitely play king f8. It's a safe move. Here comes knight to f3, knight to e7, knight to g3, attacking the rook on h5. So here we have rook h6, queen d2, b5 by black, a3, stopping this b4 ideas. Here we have a5, keeping this b4 ideas in the future. So h4 by Magnus, f5, the idea of f5 is very straightforward, here black wants to keep the king side close so that there would be no attack with something crazy like f5 ideas, that's why he played f5. And if white and passing in this position, then after g to f6, it's completely fine position for both the sides, 
the idea of black is very simple he wants to play king f7 followed by rook g8 and the position is completely fine that's why magnus carlsen didn't done the end pass in and at the place of end pass in he played bishop to e2 developing the piece here we have knight d8 king f2 and a4 in this position and a4 was a mistake by levin aronian uh because if you see this position very closely you will understand the center is completely closed and white all pieces have been slowly coming into the king side to attack black king on the effort as the black king is on the king side so it's better to attack on the king side and if i talk about the black so black pieces are can move either on the center either on the king side or either on the queen side but it's better to attack on the queen side by something like b4 ideas in the future for now it cannot be possible but in future definitely the idea can be possible but in this move Levin Aronian played a4 which was a completely bad move and after a4 black cannot play b4 b4 in the future not at all if you would if you would a better move at the place of a4 would have been bishop to e8 because if the game would have continued from this position then there would be some knight g5 rook a7 h5 queen b6 bishop f3 and here comes b4 by black queen c1 if white decides to capture the pawn here we have a into b4 rook into a7 queen into a7 and after c into b4 white will, uh, black will simply play knight to c6 followed by queen to a4 and going to capture the b4 pawn and it's completely equal position and even after b4 if white doesn't capture the pawn and play queen c1 here we have rook b8 and idea is to capture either of the pawn so white will capture the pawn a into b4 here we have rook h1 rook a7 rook into a7 queen into a7 and it's completely with equal position although it's slightly better position for white but it's completely fine and playable position but after king f2 here in this position levin aronian played a4 and stopped all his b4 plan and now it's, it looks like one side game has Perhaps Magnus is simply going to play rook g2 followed by rook g1. I'm going to do a very dangerous attack. So let's see what happened in the game. So after a4, here we have rook g2, knight to f7, rook g1, and after playing rook g1, Magnus Carlsen have got all his pieces on the king side and he's going ready for the attack. So here we have rook h8, h5, knight h6, knight to g5, rook a6. King f1, knight f1, bishop to e8, and Magnus Carlsen is slowly and steadily improving his position and then going to attack. So here we have knight e3, knight to g8, knight, bishop to f3, queen e7, king e1, bishop f7, king g1, and this idea of Magnus Carlsen I, I like very much because at the place of attacking first on the king's side, he's first taking the king on the queen side perhaps to even a2 and the king on a2 is going to be completely safe and then he is going to attack the black king which is on f8 so here comes king d1 rook e7 king c1 rook d7 and i want all you guys to stop this video and try to find the move which magnus carlsen played although that wasn't the best move but it's completely fine move and it was a very interesting move so feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move. So okay, so to all those who have found the right move which Magnus Carlsen played, congratulations you are a complete attacking player and very sacrificing player because you have chosen the idea knight into d5, a very nice move by Magnus Carlsen and it requires a very hard calculation. In the game, after knight into d5, here comes rook into d5. If black would have captured the knight with the pawn by playing e into d5, now comes a very powerful move, e6, attacking the rook as well as the bishop. So black have to capture, and now comes rook to e2, attacking the bishop twice, and the bishop cannot move because the queen is hanging on e7. So if black tries to defend the bishop by playing rook d6, now coming queen e1. And now it's a triple, a triple attack on the bishop and the bishop cannot move and no piece can defend the bishop on e6 and that's why it's completely winning position for white. 
darts off to knight into d5 here comes rook into d5 still it's completely winning position for white i'm going to show you in a couple of moves you will, you will also be able to see that yes it's a completely winning position for white after rook into d5 here we have knight into e7 knight into f7 capturing up the bishop knight into f7 bishop into d5 e into d5 and now we have rook into g7 and in this position if you count the material we can say white is having seven pawns and black is having five pawns and it's like rook was just two knight but if you look at the position closely white is completely pressing the game and white is better you can see the rook cannot move because the knight is hanging on g8 the knight this knight on f7 cannot move because the queen is hanging on e7 that first completely winning position for white and even the e5 pawn is very strong and if i talk about black pawn the black pawn on f5 and d5 are very loose and they can be targeted very easily so that's why after rook into g7 it's completely winning position for white but after rook into g7 here 11 Aronian played rook knight h to g6 knight g to h6 sorry here comes queen g2 knight to g4 a very nice move and a very obvious move here knight is chopping the connection between rook and the queen and the rook so if one piece chops the connection then we capture the knight then we capture that piece here comes rook into g4 by magnus carlsen a very nice move by magnus carlsen because usually when players face this position they try okay the king is attacking the rook so let me move the rook but although it's also winning but the move which magnus carlsen found ca sacrificing even the rook and after queen into b g4 is completely winning position for white because it's although it looks like white is a piece down because black is the knight up but if you will see the e f and h pawn they're all pass pawn on that so it's completely winning position for white so after queen into g4 here black played knight king to e8 trying to move the king on the queen side but here comes f5 by magnus carlsen advancing his queen side pawns and which gives a very very large amount of advantage to white so in this position levin ronin decided to capture the pawn on e5 here we have d into e5 and after queen into e5 levin ronin sacrificed the knight for the two pawns and but still it's completely winning position for white here we have f6 by magnus carlsen which was a very big blunder he just gave up all his advantage in this position the better move could be to play simply queen to g6 and after queen g6 check here we have king e7 f6 check here you cannot capture the pawn on f6 because of rook e1 check you have to move the king and after you move the king i will simply capture the queen and it's winning so that's after f6 check you have to move the king here comes queen g7 check king to d6 at the place of capturing up the rook white is going to play f7 and after queen take and after queen trade here comes rook f8 h6 king e7 h7 rook h8 and after rook g8 it's completely winning position for white and black cannot stop white queen because if you try to capture the rook it's a queen if you ca try to capture the pawn on h7 it's still a queen and if you try to capture the pawn on f7 i'm simply going to capture the rook on h8 and after king g6 king g7 i can simply move my rook to perhaps g8 or even b8 and after black captures i'll capture and i'm just a rook plus and it's winning so it would have been complete winning position if magnus carlsen would have simply played queen g6 check but he played f6 for the terrible blunder because now comes queen e3 check king b1 queen e4 check queen into e4 d into e4 and here magnus carlsen played rook h1 which was his last hope just in this position if i talk about this position it's still slightly better for white he can continue the position white is better in this position still because white is having some counterplay like rook g5 attacking the pawn on b5 so black cannot protect for now so here we have king f7 rook into b5 king e to f6 king c2 rook d8 h6 e3 rook h5 rook d2 check king c1 rook d8 rook h3 e2 trying to make a queen but here we have rook h1 stopping the queen king g6 rook e1 rook e8 king d2 
rook b8 going for the pawn on b2 so here we have rook into e2 rook into b2 capturing up the pawn with a check so here we have king e2 king e3 rook b3 king, rook h2 very nice move by white here you have king black have to play king h7 because if black goes for to capture up the pawn on c3 then there would be simply king d4 attacking the rook even if you try to give check i'm going to simply capture the pawn on c4 attacking the rook and if you try to gain another pawn i'm going to simply play h7 and black cannot stop h8 queen and it's completely win and even after king h even even after you play king h7 it's coming king d4 rook into a3 after king into c4 it's completely winning for white because black is going to put his king on the h7 because the pawn because the black uh, king on h7 is chopping the pawn on h6 and what white have to do is very simple he just have to move the king to b4 and simply wants to push the pawn and just winning for white but after d and e4 what happened in the game is rook h1 which just equalizes the game completely because now comes king f7 h6 king into f6 king to c1 here we have rook d8 rook d1 rook to d3 rook to h1 rook d8 h7 trying to make a king so king g7 is a fourth move rook h5 and in this position by playing rook e8 it's it was a blunder and now magnus carlsen is winning because in this position the better move could be to play e3 and the idea is very simple black wants to push and play rook d8 one check and make a queen so white have to play rook h3 e2 rook h1 after king f6 rook e1 rook h8 rook into e2 rook into h7 something like rook e8 rook h5 king c2 rook e5 rook b8 and it's completely drawish position so that's why it's completely drawing position nothing is going to happen so after rook h5 e3 was a complete drawish game but in the game rook e8 was played by levin ruin perhaps he was trying to win the game by he perhaps he thought that e3 to e1 perhaps was still equal but now coming king d2 e3 check king e2 king h8 and here rook grabs the pawn on b5 king grabs the pawn on h7 and now comes rook to b4 very natural move and a nice move the rook on b4 is targeting both the pawn on a4 as well as the c4 so one pawn is going to fall here comes king g6 rook into c4 rook a8 trying to protect the a4 pawn here we have king into e3 king f5 king d3 king e5 here rook b4 king d5 c4 check king c6 king c3 rook a5 rook b5 rook a7 king b4 rook a8 rook a5 rook b8 check and after move after playing king to c3 in this position after move number 66 levan oronian with the black pieces resigned the game and magnus carlsen with the white pieces won the game fantastic game by magnus carlsen but there were a couple of blunders in the end game by both the players but in the starting i can say that magnus carlsen was completely winning the game because the only option was in the game after levan oronian played a4 it was i can say the attack done by magnus carlsen was a fantastic attack but in the end he just messed up but the game is of blunder so levan oronian also did the blunder and which gave the complete winning position to magnus carlsen and he won the game so the first game was, uh, so the day one was won by magnus carlsen and today is the day number two which is going to happen so if you like this game then please like to my video and if you are new to my channel then don't leave before subscribing to my channel and i will come up with these new videos for you because the tournament is still pending so thank you for watching and bye bye